<laughs> now you now universal greeting for <laughs> ball rocket gamers. <laughs> Hey That's everybody, <laughs> how you doing, Tox? Good, how are you? Uh, going out of my mind, but beyond that, I'm doing great. <laughs> so, uh, I appreciate you stopping by, man. I, my last episode, I spent uh, 20 minutes just talking about what I wanted to do in Forestry Town, and now I actually plan to get to it. So, I appreciate you stopping by here and uh, helping me out today. We'll keep it fun and exciting. <laughs> <laughs> That's always the plan. Yeah, it never seems to work out that way. Uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, so for all of my viewers at home and, and for all of uh, Tox's uh, viewers... Um, who haven't been here. Who haven't been here. <laughs> if, you, if you didn't check out my last episode, I highly encourage it. Uh, shameless, shameless prompt, shameless prompt. Uh, <laughs> um, I basically go through and I explain what we're going to be doing, including the phone ringing in my background. Yay! Uh, <laughs> anyways... Um, I explain what we're going to be doing in terms of the forestry town. Uh, again, uh, pretty darn important because as of right now, the biggest issue we're having is that for the forestry town, it's going to be basically our, our mainstay, our st uh, staple, if you will, for uh, power supply. So instead of having Yankee's house be the place where we get all of our, our, our stuff from, hey, talks are being followed. <laughs> uh, instead of having uh, Yankee's house be the place that produces all of our wood for charcoal and, and whatnot, we're actually going to move it out to Forestry Town. And wow, I get all the stuff from it. I love this coin. Um, so we're going to get that started on it. So I go through and talk about the design aspect, ow, <laughs> as well as the functional aspect. So today we're actually gonna be starting on getting the layout for all the harvesting. And what we decided to do was basically have different areas throughout the forest that are going to grow different types of trees and we'll have real craft trains with chunk loaders head out to those locations. This way we will not be producing trees unless we actually need the trees. So the chunk loaded trains will go out to these different areas, load just that three by three area. The trees can grow, get harvested, loaded onto the train, and then the trains can come back and dump the stuff off. So this is not going to be the most exciting part, so I'm not going to go ahead and record all of it. But again, the idea was we'd have a little little hub hut over here with the different branch offs, and we'll go out to the different areas. So we're going to run the tracks out, pick our areas out, and then we'll uh, come back and uh, show you guys what we've done so far and what we're going to do next. All right? Hey everybody, welcome back. So we uh, got some work done here, and uh, to keep ourselves motivated, we got our uh, hats of encouragement, as you can see, helping us keep us moving here. Um, yeah, um, they help. <laughs> they help a lot, Mort. <laughs> hey, we got things done. <laughs> Let's uh, chase these diamonds, man. Woohoo, all right, so here we go. So coming from the... Uh, the tree over here, we have a drag coming out. Now, we do have multiple directions to go. Um, so what we've done is kind of set the first area here. The first area is going to be all of the vanilla trees, plus the two different types of rubber trees from Mine Factory Reloaded and from Industrial Craft. So we have a track that comes down here, and it splits off this direction. I'll talk about how it splits off and why later. Uh, but it comes down here. I can use my super fast run here. Woohoo! And we're going to come out to this first section here, all the way down. And when we get out to here, it kind of splits off. And this is where we have the, the magic start to happen here. Now, the design we talked about uh, a little bit was uh, to keep from having to load the entire area to get trees to grow. We'd have the trains come through with a, uh, a chunk loader mine cart, which loads a 3x3 three three area. And then a couple of extra mine carts to basically drop off and pick up supplies. So if you have, like, forestry running out here, you'd have them drop off fertilizer and power and water and all that and then they, they pick up the wood so we have these uh, wonderful markers here and i i okay i love this diamond i really do but i gotta turn this off <laughs> i can't see anything <laughs> hold on wait, wait i'll put my dalek back on <laughs> <laughs> oh boy we are losing it i tell you i tell you uh as people are people are gonna find out my my dirty secret, that my hat is actually not naturally green. I'm not naturally <laughs> green. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so we've set up these areas around here. Now you guys will turn out tracks, and the idea is the trains will come down. And if you look around here, you see these little yellow lamps everywhere. These actually mark uh, a particular chunk. I'll go ahead and hit F9 here, show you chunk boundaries. So the train is going to pull into this chunk here, somewhere in this chunk, to be exact, and it's going to load 
the chunks around it. So you get that wonderful 3x3 three three area. So in that extended area, if you will, marked by those little cobblestone pillars, are basically the different areas. So they say this first light is oak, for example. Next up here is birch and so on. As trains come down the line here, they're going to take this little loop. And if they happen to qualify, if you will, if they are over here for the purpose of picking up oak or picking up birch or whatever, they'll pull off into those little side panels and they'll be stopped and basically held there until they are full up of the particular item they need. This way will load just that area and we'll have a bunch of little random farms farming uh, those particular types of trees, be it oak, birch, whatever, and the train will fill up on them and then go ahead and head back. Now again, if you get a kind of a high vantage point here, you'll see we've got one there, one there, and that's kind of repeated. You see there's no one out there, and so on. So basically, we're going to have a bunch of little ones dispersed throughout the forest. And again, we'll either use uh, MFR or um, Forestry's uh, utility for, um, for harvesting trees. And then the train will come back through here. And again, it's just going to come right back down the line, and then back in and across the bridge to be unloaded. So that's... That's the basic idea, and we're going to repeat this process throughout the forest, all the way around, um, for whatever amount we need. As we keep adding trees, we'll keep adding uh, uh, more of these type of little little loops, if you will. Um, now, here's here's the real challenging part, and that is a couple of things. First of all, uh, if we have more than one train that comes out and does harvesting, which we likely will, we have to be a little bit concerned about having two trains on a single line here because obviously the train's coming back from pickup and one's heading on out we're going to have problems so we need to figure out how to resolve that issue and also how are the trains going to know where to go so that is where we start getting into the logistics so we're going to go ahead and head over to a little sample we have and we'll be right back all right guys so moving on on to, on to the next uh, task here since we've got the tracks laid out uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the logistics here. So we've made a perfect uh, scale replica of our layout here, including the size of the tree, as you can see. Perfect scale. <laughs> um, talks? That's not scale. I didn't put that sapling there. Mm-hmm. Is that at least the 7x7 seven seven sapling, though? Probably not. <laughs> Anyways, so uh, to give you an idea of what's going on here, this little uh, stretch of tractor here represents the uh, the bridge where the uh, trains come across, and then you've got this little uh, uh, switch out here. As we talked about earlier, we're going to have one section coming over here for all the vanilla stuff, and then as you saw, we have those little turnouts in different sections. Now, again, this is a scale representation, so we've got three laid out here. It's just kind of an example. Uh, but what we're going to be using, we're actually going to be using um, tickets, little golden tickets here. I'll even give uh, Tox a, a ticket so you can look at it. Golden ticket. Just trying to decide something to throw out so I have room to look at it. <laughs> All right. All right. Free, free this iron. is I what like happens it. when... Uh... So the golden tickets are uh, programmable tickets. Now, if you right-click on the, dis the bleh, if you right -click on the ticket, you will see you're able to actually type in a destination. Now, here's the really cool thing about the ticking system with Railcraft is you can pretty much set a bunch of variables for a destination. To give you an example, you can have certain variables involved with if the destination is, uh, uh, in this case, vanilla and oak. You're giving it two, uh, two different uh, destination IDs. You're then going to be able to use that information as a relay point, if you will, for uh, traversing the train. So in this particular case, we would have the trains come down, and the first switch that comes across, that switch is going to be programmed with the destination of vanilla. And if it sees vanilla, it's going to switch the train to head this direction. So anything called vanilla goes this way. It doesn't matter if it's vanilla oak, vanilla pine, vanilla spruce, whatever. It's going to go down this track. And then it comes down around here, it comes to this way here. This guy says, I'm spruce. Bypass it. I'm oak. Okay, turn off onto here. So that's pretty straightforward. It basically just kind of gives the trains a a, a predefined uh, name of sorts that these these particular uh, little guys can pick up on. 
So it's pretty straightforward. Now, the other t the other part of the uh, logistics we talked about is keeping trains from slamming into each other, since that's kind of bad news. Uh, just so you know, railcraft trains, if they hit anything, like another minecart or another train, uh, bad things happen that result in a very large crater that would make a creepy uh, a creeper envy. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so to keep that from happening, for stretches of track where we cannot put twin tracks down, like for example, going across a bridge, trying to hide the tracks under the bridge um, would have to actually alter the look of the bridge. I don't want to do that. So for this little stretch right here, we're actually going to be using what we call uh, signal relays and signal boxes. Um, and basically what they're going to do is they're going to monitor... Uh, a, a stretch of track and give you information about it. And Tox is going to talk a little more about that. Uh, so I, we've already got the signal block uh, relay box uh, set down here. That's just on this end of the bridge. Um, and I have in my hand um, something which is called a block signal. And it's moving things into my hand here. And I see right now they're both uh, blinking red. That's because they're not uh, paired to anything. Uh, but if I take this signal block surveyor that will shut off in a second here. Uh, right click on here. And yeah, then right click flashing on here. yellow. And then it goes yeah. green. It, it will flash yellow momentarily while it's trying to pair. Um, that was obviously way too fast. It paired pretty quick. <laughs> um, so now it's solid green um, because there's nothing in the track in between here. Uh, a little note here this has to be a straight track. There cannot be any bends in here, unfortunately. Uh, so. Um, yeah, um, now these, uh, these lights can also be solid yellow and solid red if there are, if there is something on the track in between, such as this minecart. Uh, this minecart is currently stopped, so they're both red, but if it was moving in one direction or the other, uh, didn't trigger it, but, uh. A little too, a little too short and a little too slow for me to, uh. Get to go off, I'm sure. Yeah. It does, it does uh, have to have a certain should, bit of moving. Should be displaying yellow. If, uh. Um. And that's the direction that it's, uh. Moving away from. So basically, what it boils down to is, uh. There's, there's three basic things you have for functional lights or functional aspects. Aspects being the, um. Uh, different uh, settings for the lights. If a, no, if there's no thing on the tracks at all, the tracks are considered clear, then they're solid green like they are now. If there is a minecart moving uh, away from a signal, the signal will be yellow. And then if it's uh, stopped on the tracks or moving towards the signal, it's red. This is kind of a neat trick because then if you look at any one of these lights here, for example... If this light is green, you know it's clear. If it's yellow, you know something's moving away from you. And if it's red, you know something's coming towards you or is dead on the tracks. So it gives you a nice, easy way to figure out what's going on. Now, just so you guys know, I have uh, in my NEI here, um, I've got all the railcraft set up. Uh, just a little quick tip. If you don't already know, if you have NEI, if you type in the at symbol and the name of a mod, in this case Railcraft, I put in Rail, that'll actually give you a list of all of the items related to that mod. So in this case, I put in at sign Rail, it shows me all the Railcraft stuff. There are additional uh, components to this whole logistics for Railcraft, including things like, um, you have the block signals we just talked about, distance signals, what they call dual head signals, as well as a few other uh, little aspects like uh, signal receivers, controller boxes, etc. I will most likely get into this later because me and Yankee have been uh, doing a lot of uh, work, as you guys saw quite a few episodes back when we talked about doing logistics for uh, our server. Um, but all these lights have a lot of cool features and functions, and a lot of these kind of act like uh, wireless redstone in a lot of ways. So when we get into that, you'll have a lot of fun uh, showing you how things work here. But the basics are, quite frankly, this is a simple way for us to tell if there's something on the tracks, and then we can have this controller box send a signal saying if there's a train coming out and there's already one on the tracks coming back, hold that train, wait till the track is clear, and then send the train on its way. Pretty straightforward in that regard. So, ha! Huh, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> 
Onward, onward and upward. So the, the next thing we're going to be doing here is we're going to be uh, diving into getting the ticking system set up so we can get a train functionally running down the line and looping around and coming back. Now, um, because of the project me have worked on, we've been working extensively with these uh, controller boxes and all that, so I'm pretty familiar with them. However, dealing with the ticketing system with these golden tickets and paper tickets, um, that's a whole other story. I have not dealt with those before. That's going to be a uh, new ground for me. So um, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's a learning experience. Exactly. <laughs> very much is. So at, at, at this point, talks, uh, uh, I'll give me kind of a crash course in some of this stuff here. But when it comes to the ticketing, you, you and me are going to be on the same footing when it comes to figuring out how to make it work. So, all right, guys. So me and talks are going to do some more pounding on this and uh, hopefully. Uh, We'll get that straightened out, and as soon as we do, we'll, we'll bring it back in, and we'll show you a functional system. Welcome back. Um, so we've uh, worked out a, uh, a pretty much functional system here. Um, let's just show it from the, from above. Uh, the train's actually just in the back there. Uh, warped, we'll talk about that in a minute, though. Um, but I'll start off with, uh, with some of these train things here. Um, I got a... A relay signal block relay box, a signal controller box, and over there is a signal receiver box uh, hiding under the trees. Um, if I just uh, put my goggles on, um, you can see that this is synced with uh, with that receiver box. Um, uh, so this is uh, monitoring this straight the straight stretch of track. Apparently, that's a tongue twister. Um, between here and there. So if I were to put on a minecart in this area here, um, this receiver would receive that signal. Um, and since it now turned red because there's something in the middle here, it uh, turned off this track here. Um, so that that makes it so this train won't uh, won't try leaving when we um, if there's another train coming through here. And warp just uh, grab the uh, the minecart so. Now that train can come through. Um, Basically, it's collision prevention. If the train is passing, exactly. If the train passing by, this one won't pull out into it and cause big bada booms, which is bad. Yeah, and apparently they're pretty bad. I've, I haven't seen them. I felt it, but I haven't uh, seen train collisions yet. <laughs> Bigger than creeper. Oh, <laughs> I don't want to imagine that. Um, the other thing we've uh, done here with the trains. Um, last time we were. Or just before the break, we we were talking about uh, um, the routing of the the trains here. So uh, uh, this uh, routing switch motor um, has a routing table in it. Um, I'll pass it over to you. Warped in a minute. Mm -hmm. um, if I open this up, um, you see we have we have the destination to be Vanilla Oak. Um, the vanilla piece is uh, if I go over to the train. I don't want it to take off while I'm standing in front of it. Um, it has a golden ticket in it, um, also marked as Vanilla Oak. So when uh, when the uh, when the train comes up to the switch, uh, the switch will match with, it, uh, with the Vanilla Oak in the routing table, and it will then switch the uh, switch to go down this track, because this is the Oak section, as we can uh, see up here. So basically, the uh, concept is is if it matches with this in routing table, then it will switch switch the track. So anything that says like vanilla spruce will pass right by, and this is vanilla oak will be steered onto this line here to pick up oak. Yeah. And the other switch that we have in the system right now is over just past the bridge there. Um, uh, that's where it branches off between vanilla and others, um, and that uh, routing table. Uh, we'll say uh, just uh, vanilla, and uh, it will actually still match that. Um, partial name. Yeah, the partial name. Have we tested that yet? We have. We have, okay, yeah. yeah it, does, it does, in fact, work. That way, anything that comes across the rails here, if it says vanilla anything, it'll come over here. So you have anything that yeah. says vanilla will come across, come this direction, and then if it and says then it vanilla... And further. Yeah, vanilla oak go this way, vanilla spruce go that way, and so on. So that's that's the basic routing aspect. Now, for the actual harvesting, <laughs> the only reason why we got this thing set up, uh, we need to actually have the ability to uh, 
<clears throat> again, harvest oak trees so we can bring them back to the main hub city and get that uh, those trees har uh, processed into charcoal and biofuels and so on. So in order to do that, what we've done, we've set this little spur line here, which is the vanilla oak. So the train's going to come in. These are control tracks. And these control tracks basically will allow any mine cart or uh, entity to move along these tracks automatically. So the train comes in. This right here is a locomotive track, which I haven't put a lever next to yet. But when this is active, we're going to set it to basically shut down the train. So the train's going to turn off. That will save its coal, save its water. And then the control tracks will do the moving. When the train comes in, it's going to pull up. The first thing it's going to do is it's going to unload any fertilizer it's brought over. You can see it's got some fertilizer hanging out here waiting. Uh, and uh, unload its... Uh, uh, energy via these uh, energy loaders into this little uh, MFSU, basically a giant battery pack. This is what powers this whole system. That's going to power the logistics pipes we're using for this build, as well as for the uh, mining factory reloaded uh, machinery, which I'll show you in a second. Once it's done all of its unloading, it's going to pull forward, and then it's going to get stuck under this item loader here. Once it does that, this train detector is going to trip, and that's going to turn the system on. So basically, our little harvest system will not run until A, there's a train here with a uh, chunk loader, and B, it actually senses the train on top of this. So it'll wait till the train's actually staying here waiting for this system, and then it'll start filling this up. So right now we're a little ways in as it's going through. Um, from there, basically what it's just going to do is we only got one harvester set up right now, but just for the sake of example, we have our little harvesting up here. So MF, uh, MFR consists of like three major components for this type of uh, harvest system. Underground here, you can't really see it, obviously, because it's buried, but is the uh, <laughs> farmer, I think it's called. Uh, but it basically planter, I think. Planter, so you. thank you. Because it plants things. Hi! And there like you that. go. <laughs> so it plants all these saplings, and then when the saplings grow up, uh, this uh, harvester right here will cut it down and put it into the system, and that was, that's what runs over to the train to be filled. This guy over here is a fertilizer. This is a guy that uses that fertilizer to grow these plants up a little faster. So when we have fertilizer, it'll work everything up. So, long story short, <laughs> this is the kind of system we're going to be doing. This is the kind of unit we're going to be doing. When trains pull in, it'll start harvesting for us. When the train's full, it'll take off. The last little bit of the, uh, the piece of the puzzle here, just to make it extra fun, is that some of, these some of the mine factory reloaded machinery actually produces sludge as a byproduct, as a function. So we are actually piping that sludge back over here to this liquid loader. And you see we've got a mine cart on the end here. And we, basically what we're going to be doing is having it dump all of the uh, sludge into there and haul the sludge back to town. It'll have some form of processing out there. Now, just to be clear... We could void pipe this if we wanted to. We don't want to. We actually want to have fun and deal with stuff. It's Again, this is a logistics-based server. Instead of dumping everything in lava or dumping everything into void pipes, we actually want to have fun with it. So that's basically it. This is the Forestry Town set up in the sense that this is the first segment. Again, we're going to eventually, over time, as we need them, keep adding these different little turnouts for the different types of trees we want to have on Avid Hall. If we end up going through all of them, It'd be pretty crazy because that'd be 200 trees <laughs> uh, forestry alone because of all the tree breeding. There are so many different types of trees out there that we can get really, really crazy with the system. Um, but we do have the ability to do it now. So, yay. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and uh, call this uh, pretty much a win here. There is a little, little bit of step we have to do. As you guys saw, I need to set up an unloader for the tank and whatnot. But effectively, the, the, the idea is here. Everything's pretty much done functionally. Um we are going to be running this tracks directly back into forestry, having to unload there and process. But just for the interim, since forestry is not actually a functional city yet, we're doing a little bypass, you can see here. So this train will actually run straight back to Hubtown on its own for now. And then again, as we get the thing set up and running, then we'll have it actually divert and be a separate line system that just goes back to forestry to get processed. And then the main line will connect to forestry for pickup and delivery. So that's that. Um, I do want to just real quickly before I let you guys go, I actually want to show you the complexity that can be had with Railcraft. Uh, as Tox just showed you, there are the, uh, the uh, relays here, the controllers and the uh, receivers and the little switching. Um, this is a very, very simple little thing that's kind of half set up. <laughs> but I want to give you a little bit of a feel of just how crazy you can get. So we'll be right back in one second and we'll show you something fun. 
All right, guys. So I just want to show you this, uh, real quickly because I'm, it's kind of fun. Um, this is actually the intersection between uh, the rail line right here heading out towards Forestry, and this is the rail line heading out to uh, Rourke's place. And just to make things easier on ourselves, so to speak, instead of having to set two separate locations for filling up power and dropping off items and so on, we just figured we'd just merge them together. So in order to do that, as you can see here, we have to run the tracks together. Now, there's a few little quirks to this that are not normal. First of all, uh, the forestry towns, because of the way loops work and everything, it runs British style, if you will, so the train is actually coming in on the wrong side uh, and then cutting over to the right side, so to speak. Um, that's that's weird quirk number one. And question number two is, you can see, tracks cross each other. Not a big deal. We have a little uh, intersection track you can see right here, our junction track. The only problem with that is, is if you have two trains that happen to line up and happen to come together at the same time, Bad news. Uh, if, if trains hit like right here, for example, and blew up, most of these things would be gone. Uh, it, it, it decimates things pretty badly. <laughs> so uh, the, 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 real, the real quirk of this is because of the way it's set up, you have one segment coming in, has to check and see if there's a train coming on this little segment right here, which is why there's a box down there and a box up here for it, as well as check if there's a train coming this direction and turning across, as well as if there's a, still a train in this intersection. So to do all that, I'm going to put my goggles on here. Try not to get sick. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to see all of the interconnectivity here. This this gets a little crazy. You get the, the red pepper dust going everywhere. But basically, as you can see over here, we've got all these different signals. So we've got a couple of different monitors going into these relays or these receivers, which all feed into these controllers. Just so you know, whenever you have a system set up where you've got multiple receivers tied into one controller, that's basically a controller monitoring multiple sections, and it's always going to take the precedence of whatever the highest priority is. So if you have two of the green and one that's red, controller goes red. Simple concept. So again, also for here, this has to check what's in front of it, as well as the turn here, and so on. So long story short, um, this may not be the most efficient way to do things. This is my first intersection I've done. Um, but this is kind of fun you can have with Railcraft. Then we also got uh, Tox's... Uh, uh, routing switch here with the same kind of concept. In this particular case, we have a setup so it has a uh, forestry uh, marker in there so the forestry train will turn, or sorry, colors. Uh, yeah. So it's color markers in here where it says, I'm looking for a green and lime green train. If it, that goes by, it switches the track so forestry heads down that way. So the last little quick thing I'm going to show you, these entire stretch of tracks we have here are all monitored tracks. So they're basically they're called blocks which is end-to-end, -end, you've got these little blocks here that are monitoring a straight stretch of track. I cannot say that. <laughs> and that's all it is for is that way if there's another train on, on the tracks in front, it's not going to have two trains pile up on each other. So we're just keeping keeping monitoring things and then allowing uh, the tracks to uh, make our, the system to make sure two trains don't travel in the same area and clog up. Uh, we come into the uh, loading-unloading area here. Um, I showed this guy. I showed this to you guys in the past here, but we've done, made a lot of changes. Again, because we have two trains now, we have monitoring. Uh, primarily, for example, right here, if uh, this line right here is a primary line, if this is in use, then this switch will switch, as you can see, like that, and it'll push the next train over to here. So that way, we can have both trains here and loading, without having to worry about uh, one being backed up. And if we ever have a third line added. Then this guy right here, thanks to a uh, not gate and a little bit of setup, will actually turn off. So the train will actually stop here and wait till one of these two lines opens up. They it's come a NAND in. Gate. NAND gate, sorry. Uh, trains come in, they get unloaded, filled with power, topped off with, uh, in this case, fertilizer, um, and then head on back around. Locomotives get filled up with the uh, charcoal, just like the old way. And then talk about water before they head on out. So that's basically it. This is getting finally getting into what the server was first set up for for logistics. Was again, we don't have teleportations. All this stuff has to move from town to town physically. <laughs> we can't just portal gun it or teleportation chests or whatever. We can't do that. So that's the fun we have. Anyways, as always, guys. 
really appreciate you taking the time to sit down with us and watch this. We're really hoping that you guys enjoyed this. We are going to be doing a lot of other projects. This is certainly not uh, the last one we're going to be doing. Uh, there's a lot of other technology we want to get up and running here. And we'll talk a little more about that in the next episode. Um, but for now, uh, we're going to go ahead and call this done, call us a win. Talks, you learned something today, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Talks begin the crash course. Uh, speaking of crash I, courses, I played with trains. Uh, in, in case you guys are being uh, picky choosy about the episodes you watch, we do have a little mini series going on right now uh, called uh, Teaching Talks Tech, and this is, Which uh, is also really hard to say. <laughs> this is a chance for me to teach talks and uh, teach anybody else who wants to learn a little bit about the fundamentals of tech. I am not an expert. I'm not a master. I'm not a dire wolf or anything like that. But I am somebody who's been playing with this for a while, so it's fun to actually get a chance to teach somebody else how this all works and how it all plays um so that's our, that's what our little series we're doing so definitely uh catch that up if you haven't uh, watched the episodes go ahead and roll back to the first one and uh, i'll start you out getting to know talks a little better and going from there so uh enjoy that uh as always as i said i appreciate it, guys it's been a blast hope you enjoyed it if you have any questions concerns quandaries whatever as always comments right down below feel free to to Post them down there, and I'll be happy to uh, follow up with you. And of course, uh, uh, you know, hit, hit, hit the like button for us. Uh, the, the like button—I'm not real fond of it, as you know—but it helps us. It helps get the ranking up there, and that's all well and good. So please uh, uh, smash that for us. And of course, if you do enjoy what we do here, there's going to be a lot more of it. Go ahead, hit the hit the subscribe button. Uh, we're going to try to keep things uh, going here. Talks has been pretty good about keeping me on task here, so I'm actually putting out videos at least once a week, if not more, which is really cool. So I'm enjoying that. Uh, whoa, hello. <laughs> uh, and of course, if you really want to have a conversation with uh, me and Talks and anybody else in the uh, BRG clan, uh, you're certainly welcome to mosey on over to the BottleRocketGaming.com website. Get yourself uh, signed up on the forums there. Uh, on the website and uh, hop in and uh, post and say hi and ask questions and whatnot. Uh, we certainly do encourage conversations there and it's a great way for us to communicate back and forth. Uh, so we definitely like that. And uh, last but not least, and always very important, this is a whitelist server. However, we certainly do enjoy having fun, interesting people join us on this server. Yes, we do have a couple people like Tox and myself and Rook who are in fact uh, YouTubers. Uh, but as not a prerequisite to playing on this server. Uh, if you're a good niche person, if you do happen to do YouTube videos, great. It's a great way to vet you, but it's not required. If you're interested, hop on over to the Ball Rock Gaming forums and go ahead and apply in the forums and state your interest and a little bit about yourself. We'll get to find some time to meet up with you and talk and uh, make sure you're a good fit for us and make sure we're a good fit for you. So, again, thank you and uh, have yourself a good one. Have a good life. Bye!